All right, today I want to speak about uh, free surface effect that occurs on ships. Uh, this is a topic in ship stability. And this I think is video 10, if I can keep track of these videos in the series of ship stability. I'll provide you with a link to all my other videos in the description section below. Uh, I'll advise the students to watch them in order, watch them right from the beginning, so that you have a good understanding of these different concepts uh, that uh, are involved in ship stability because uh, I can't explain each and every concept every time. I try to focus on new concepts in every video. So if you are watching this video as the first video in this series of ship stability, uh, you may not understand some of these uh, uh, concepts because I've explained them before. All right, so I'll advise you to watch those videos first and then start with this video. So this video will focus purely on the concept of free surface effect and uh, free surface moment and how to calculate the free surface effect how to take this into account um, this is what the focus of the video is today all right so to understand what free surface effect is let's assume there are two uh, not assume but let's see there are two drawings here two figures are drawn here so let's call the first one figure one and the second one figure two in the first one the figure one you see that there is a ship it's a box ship vessel and it's upright in which the force of gravity is acting downwards and the force of buoyancy acting upwards these two forces are equal and opposite and they are cancelling each other out and that is why uh, this is an upright vessel on even keel right where k is of course the keel of the vessel g is the center of gravity and b is the center of buoyancy in the second figure you can see that the vessel is now listed on one side or rather i would say healed on one side so the vessel has healed on one side on the starboard side and when we say it's healed, that means that uh, there is no shift in the transfer in the in the weights involved. Uh, this has happened mainly maybe due to a wind or waves, or due to a sudden and large alteration of course. So it could be because of overtight moorings, but there is no shifting of weights involved here. So when the vessel heals, because there is no shifting of weights involved, the center of gravity remains where it is. It is only the center of buoyancy that shifts. And the center of buoyancy is basically the geometric center of the underwater volume of the ship. So that's why the center of buoyancy shifts on one side. All right, so let's assume this is now a tank. So when a vessel with a partly full tank rolls at sea, so this is partly full, it's not full, all right? It's partly full, it's half. Um, the liquid in the slack tank moves to the lower side during each roll. At certain angles of roll, the vessel starts to behave as if her GM has been reduced. There is a virtual loss of GM. All right, so GM is the distance between the center of gravity and the transverse meta center M. So again, like I said before, if you this is the first video you're watching in the series, I advise you to watch my previous videos because there I've explained all that concept. So I will not go into all that again. Uh, otherwise, your time is going to get wasted. All right, so because uh, we feel as if the vessel's gm has been reduced and the gm determines the stability of a vessel and there's a virtual loss and we imagine with every roll that the vessel's gm has been reduced sometimes the metacentric height or transverse metacenter coinciding with the center of gravity as shown in say figure two it's called the free surface effect or fsc of course so the virtual loss of gm that occurs due to the vessels rolling and the center of buoyancy shifting with a slack tank uh, is also called free surface correction so if we can calculate the free surface correction we'll know exactly how much uh, virtual gm is getting lost in these cases now this happens only with slack tanks that are which are not full and otherwise if the tank is absolutely full full to the bottom top or absolutely empty then there is no free surface effect free surface effect only occurs for tanks which are partially full and that's why you will see many chief officers they either f keep the tanks full or they'll completely make it empty because during a voyage you don't want the free surface effect to take place because the collection of these tanks uh, adds up to a large free surface effect which can then reduce the gm reducing the gm is not good for the vessel because it affects the stability and also the writing lever and its ability to come back if a vessel heals over to one side all right so i've talked about all that before so in this case of course we are talking only about the calculating of the free surface correction because that basically tells us that if we subtract the free surface correction from the initial gm which is called the gm solid we'll get something called the gm fluid or the final gm 
which is used in all stability calculations for safety purposes so what we consider is the final gm or gm fluid as the final gm because that basically includes all the impact of the free surface correction and that gives us a good stability idea of uh, stability that the vessel will have during its voyage so that's a safety gm so free surface correction is calculated by a formula i upon v multiplied by di by du where i is the moment of inertia v is the volume of displacement of ship or underwater volume di is the density of liquid in the slack tank this is the density of liquid inside the tank and do is the density of the water outside in which the ship is floating all right but because the displacement denoted by w is also equal to underwater volume by density the denominator of the above formula here the denominator because underwater volume by density so the denominator may be replaced by displacement itself so free surface correction may be equal to i multiplied by di that is moment of inertia multiplied by volume of displacement of moment of inertia multiplied by density of liquid in slack tank divided by the vessel's overall displacement all right so there are different ways you can interpret the formula for free surface correction sorry let's start with question number one which is a straightforward question you have to calculate the gm fluid or final gm if your displacement is 10,000 kg is given to you km is given to you your moment of inertia is given to you and the relative density of the fuel oil which is the liquid inside the tank is given to you as well ships cannot float in fuel oil so this must be the relative density of the liquid inside the tank all right so in this case free surface correction will be calculated by i di multi divided by displacement where i is the moment of inertia given to you di is the density of the liquid inside the tank which is the relative density of fuel oil so 1242 multiplied by 0 0.95 divided by the overall displacement of the vessel this gives you a free surface correction of 0.118 free surface corrections are always given in meters write down the km subtract the kg to get your gm solid your gm solid is the gm before you apply your free surface correction then you apply your free surface correction which is always negative which reduces your gm solid to gm fluid or gm final as 0.682 meters so this was a straightforward question and answer you just took the values put them in the formula let's take example number two example number two the vessel has a displacement of 16635 tons which is the w all right because this is in black right let me write it in black the km is given to you kg is given to you and you have the following tanks slack so these are all tanks which are slack they are partially full all right they are not empty or fully full so they all will have an effect on the free surface correction free surface effect so the tanks are listed below one two three four five six tanks are listed the moment of inertia are given to you the relative density of fuel oil is given to you which is for this tank and this tank the relative density of diesel oil is given to you so do stands for diesel oil which is for this one and sea water density is known as 1.025 we all know that so this is for this tank and fresh water density is one if you didn't know that already so watch my previous video the density or relative density of fresh water is one so that's given as well so we have mainly all the required um, components to put in the formula but because there are multiple tanks this is not a single tank we have to calculate their effect um, as a resultant effect all right so let's summarize the information so to summarize the information let's draw columns so draw list out the tank list out the content the content will refer to the liquid inside the tank which is seawater fuel oil diesel oil or fresh water then of course given by the formula that fsc idi by displacement this idi can be calculated by moment of inertia multiplied by density of the liquid inside the tank which will give you the free surface moment this is the free surface moment all right this is for one tank and a collection of them will give you the cumulative amount of free surface moment when we consider all the tanks so in each case you multiply the i by di or density of the liquid be very careful the density of the liquid is not same for all the tanks it's different depending on the content of the tank so when you start multiplying you will get these answers here take all of them and add them together you will get 2004.9 tons meter this will give you the free surface moment idi the numerator the denominator is given to you as 16635 that's the displacement 
that's given to you so to calculate free surface correction by the above formula just divide the free surface moment by the displacement you get the free surface correction as before subtract your kg from km get your gm solid and then subtract your free surface correction to get your gm fluid this is your final gm or gm fluid free surface corrections are always subtracted and kg is always subtracted from km to get your gm the third example here is a vessel of 5000 tons displacement with a km of 7.8 kg 7 meters where number two port db tank or double ballast tank double bottom tank not double ballast but double bottom tank i think it's been fairly few years that i've sailed number two double bottom tank is partly full of fresh water where density is one so if this tank is 15 meters long and 9 meters broad you have to find the gm fluid so let me show you something new here that i have not shown you here so normally if the moment of inertia is given to you that's fantastic but if the moment of inertia of a tank is not given to you you can find it out of a rectangular tank or moment of inertia of a rectangular tank can be found out by lbq by 12 where l is length multiplied by the cube of breadth so multiply breadth three times cube of breadth divided by 12 so in this case length is 15 meters breadth is 9 meters cube of breadth is 9 by 9 by 9 multiplied by length divided by 15 will give you the moment of inertia so this is i but to calculate free surface correction you have to put it in the formula here i multiplied by di that is the density of liquid in the tank divided by displacement so i is here this is of course di and fresh water's density is 1 divided by the displacement which is 5000 all right so if i take all this out then it becomes very clear to you right so this is how the formula will look all right so putting the values in the formula here will give you a free surface correction and then it's pretty much the same you will subtract kg from km get the gm solid subtract the free surface correction always subtract the free surface correction from gm solid you will get the gm fluid or the final gm so I try to take three different examples here to show you how calculations involving the free surface effect and free surface moment are done. Uh, where the moment of inertia is given to you, that's fantastic. If it's not, you can find it out by the formula here. Uh, ask your lecturer for the formula. If you don't know the formula about other shapes and tanks, I normally rectangular tanks are considered because ships have rectangular tanks. Otherwise, if there's another shape given to you, I'm sure the lecturer will provide you with the formula to calculate the moment of inertia of that particular tank otherwise all the other information will be provided to you like i've said before when you are doing any kind of numericals if you are required to find something write down the formula first and then start taking off what you have and uh, try to find out what you don't have from the information given to you you will always have sufficient information to find out the missing components all right the second example today we did was multiple tanks so when it's multiple tanks it's basically you find out the free surface moment of each tank and then add them up together to find the final free surface moment and then of course you divide it by displacement it remains the same so if it's single tank it's a single tank but if it's multiple tanks just find it out in individual information and then add them up together all right the formula is pretty straightforward there are two formulas one is of course fsc equals idi divided by v by du but if V by DO can be replaced with displacement because it's underwater volume multiplied by density of the liquid in which the ship is floating, then FSC or free surface correction becomes equal to IDI divided by displacement, where I is the moment of inertia of the tank and DI is the density of the liquid inside the tank. So I hope these videos was useful to you and you understood the concept of free surface moment and free surface correction. On the ships, we always strive to have zero free surface correction because it's uh, better that way it's safer that way we have adequate gm then um, but sometimes you have to have uh, slack tanks to maintain the stability or to keep the ship uh, on even keel at that point of time it's a good idea for you to calculate your free surface moment that you will experience during your voyage and then reduce the free surface correction from the gm solid to get your final gm because that will be the more accurate gm that you will be using through the voyage uh, guys thank you for watching this video thank you for subscribing um, please uh, let me know in your comment section uh, on what you feel about these videos and uh, I always look forward to the encouragement and the, and the, and also the uh, critical uh, feedback that you give me. Uh, Alright, so I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye and all the best.